Hi guys, Andrea Mills here. Um, today we are going to do a sewing project. It's Sunday afternoon and I'm going to be making a blanket for my dad as a Christmas gift and this was something that several of you had been asking if I would do a video about because you'd like to see how to make our um, nice cozy blankets. This whole project got started last year when it was Justice's birthday in September and he wanted, I asked him what he would like for his birthday to get some ideas um, and he asked for a new blanket. So I made the first one for him and then I had bought a fleece blanket, which I will show you here in a second, for myself. Tom really liked it and he kept stealing it from me so I bought him one that was just the same one I had, a matching one, and he really liked sleeping with it but it was just a little bit too short. So I made him a blanket for his birthday, um, like last October. And then after that, everyone else wanted one. So it kind of became the thing last year for a whole year for everyone's birthday. I made them a new blanket for their bed and they are super nice and warm and soft and fuzzy. And we've all really enjoyed them. Tom actually prefers sleeping with that on top of the covers rather than under the regular sheet and blanket because he just says it keeps him so warm and cozy. So you can see here the difference in size. This is the one I bought. I think this is the Better Homes and Gardens brand of a blanket that I got at Walmart for myself and um, the one underneath is the one that I made for Tom for his birthday. So it's quite a bit um, longer, like I shouldn't say quite a bit, but like about a foot and a half longer than this one and probably what nine inches or so wider than the other one so it's just a little bit more comfortable for him to sleep with since he's tall and you can see it's made with this nice soft fuzzy fleece I picked this fabric out because I liked this one and I knew he wouldn't care so that's why I chose the owls for him the blanket I'll be making today for my dad is not going to be a particularly attractive one but I chose the colors I did because they're meaningful. Um, my mom passed away six years ago, I think it was. Yeah. And so almost six and a half years ago. And when they got married, one of their wedding gifts was this kind of a tan camel colored blanket that they always use their entire marriage. And when she died, I guess dad was feeling sentimental or whatever. So he actually had it cremated with her. Um, the funeral home gave me a piece of the blanket and I made a little pillow out of it for him first. And then for a good portion of their marriage, they also had a blue um, quilt that my grandma had made for them. And so I chose blue in the camel color for dad's blanket because of those reasons. So it wasn't necessarily because I thought it was the most beautiful choices, but I hope that it will feel meaningful to him and also be nice for him to have a nice new blankie because um, I doubt that he's went shopping for any of that kind of stuff since my mom died. So he's probably still using whatever he had when she passed away because that's just, you know, how men are. I'm going to show you first a little footage of me shopping for the fabric because I do actually one of the fabrics I got was just a regular fleece, but the other one was a, a um, softer fleece. And so I just thought it would be nice for you to kind of see that happening. See me shopping. So there's going to be a short vlog here at the beginning of us actually shopping for the fabric and then we'll get into the how-to of making it. Did you find a penny? Yes. This looks like it's a wall. What is this plastic? But do the hollow. It's that tomato with one spike. Tomato. You like that? I like. We're gonna get these ones. Ooh, look at this one. Yeah. Okay, to start off with, um, I'm using two uh, two yards of each color of fabric, 
and I don't really have a big place to lay fabric out at my house so I always just lay it on my bed so I've laid out the bottom piece nice and smooth here on my bed and I've got it so that the side that I want to be the outside of the blanket is on top because um, I'm gonna sew it with the two good sides together first and then flip it inside out and sew it again so um, this will be the top or the finished side so the unfinished side is going to be on the bottom for right now until it gets flipped around. The second piece is laid out on top. This time I have, um, again, this, the side that I want to be on the inside eventually is now on the top so that the two sides that I want to be um, showing on the outside are together and it doesn't actually matter which side you pick it's just your own preference of which ones you like better um, I've tried to go around and get all the edges as even as I can on the sides sometimes fleece comes in different sizes so they won't match up exactly right you can see here it's not matching quite on this end so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim across to make a, um, a matching edge on this side and if they were different widths, I would do the same thing on the edges, but these ones happen to be just the same size, so I don't need to trim the sides. What I don't wanna do is try to stretch one side too much. If one side is significantly bigger than the other side and you just stretch the smaller piece to fit, what will happen is that you'll end up with like saggy, bumpy spots. And you know, it's not the end of the world to have saggy, bumpy spots in your blanket, but if you'd like to avoid that, don't overly stretch it. Just get it laid out, and even if you have to cut a whole bunch off the edges to make it look right, that would be preferable to me um, rather than stretching it too much. This kind of fleece can be um, very fuzzy when you cut it, so uh, it can make a big mess on things. So if you don't want to have stuff around that might get lint stuck to it that would be annoying to pick it all off of so you know if you have your nice black coat or whatever you might not want to have it nearby when you're cutting your fuzzy fleece. I'm gonna pin all sides together. So it's all pinned now and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew around all four sides of the blanket. I'm just going to run my um, needle or the edge of my press foot right along the edge of the fabric and I'm going to sew with a long stitch because this is bulky fabric and it's just easier to get through it if I don't have very short stitches. So I'm going to choose a long stitch and I'm going to sew all the way around all four sides. But at some point I'm going to leave an opening of about 12 inches and it doesn't even matter where I do it, it's just wherever I happen to start. I will, when I get back around to that side, I will stop about 12 inches short of that point. That way I'll have a way to turn the whole thing inside out, or right side out, once I'm done sewing the sides. Okay, I've made it all the way around now and I've left an opening so I can turn it right side out. Um, I will mention that like these areas where they didn't, it doesn't line up like one side shorter than the other, I didn't pull on it to make a match. I just trusted that my pins were holding it in the right position and I just let it be. Otherwise, I felt like if I tried pulling stuff, you can really see it right here, if I tried pulling this to match the edge then I'm going to stretch it out of shape and I don't want to do that because again I might end up with a lumpy blank blanket. However, uh, a lumpy blanket is still as warm and cozy as a non-lumpy one so it wouldn't be that big of a deal but I just want to mention that, that I just trusted the pins and I didn't stretch anything. It's all turned 
right side out now and I'm going to hand sew this little um, opening closed before I finish sewing it on the machine. Now that I'm to the end of my opening, I'm going to make a couple of um, tiny stitches right here together, maybe make a little knot in them like that. So I make a big loop of thread, then I'm going to go through my loop to make a knot. Then the last stitch, I'm going to go into the blanket and then back out in a different spot like that. Then when I trim that, I kind of pull it, the end disappears inside so there's no thread sticking up. Since I started on the inside on this end and stopped on the inside on that end, there's no threads on either end. And you can see that you can barely even notice, um, you can barely even notice any of the stitching along this edge. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sew around all four sides of the blanket with the same long stitch and I'm not going to leave any openings. I'm going to do the whole thing. I'm using this um, thing as my guide because I want to come in further than I did on the other just to make it look like sort of like it's got a binding around the edge. Just this will hold it all um, nice and flat and just be kind of a decorative edge. I could um, pin all the way around but I'm not going to do that. I just kind of smooth it as I go to make sure I try to keep the edge here nice and straight as I sew so that it doesn't I don't start sewing it like that I try to just keep messing with it as I go around to try to keep it nice and flat like that Okay, so it's all done. I got the little binding sewn around the edges so it'll stay nice and flat. And that was it. It took me about 45 minutes to make the whole thing from start to finish. Making a blanket like this is not going to be less expensive than buying one at the store, but it does mean that you can make it whatever size you want. I make baby size blankets like this also. Um, and it also means you can customize the colors. So I can make a big blanket that really covers my tall guys and we can make it whatever colors that they like and they're just super soft and cozy and warm and I hope my dad enjoys this um, blanket for his Christmas gift this year.